Welcome to Holy Family. We're glad you're here with us as we prepare to encounter our Lord Jesus in worship and sacrament on this 15th Sunday in Ordinary Time. We pray that our worship may not only bring honor and glory to God, but be a source of special blessing for ourselves, our loved ones, and our whole community. My name is Eileen Dillon, and I will serve as lector today. Uh, the Mass intention is for Kyle Nathan. The presider is Father Bob. We invite you to check in on your favorite social media before silencing your device. It's one simple way we can share our faith. We are a faith community of brothers and sisters in Christ, yet we may not always know the names of the people who sit near us each week. And so, before we begin Mass, if you feel comfortable doing so, let's take a moment now to get to know each other better by sharing our name with those around us and as one family of faith, prepare to worship together. Please join in our gathering hymn, Alleluia, Raise the Gospel. Please stand. Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. We come together on a beautiful summer morning, acknowledging how much we depend upon God and his providence, his grace, the many blessings he's given us. And let's pause a moment to maybe seek God's mercy and forgiveness for the times we've taken for granted the many blessings we enjoy. Lord Jesus, you came to gather the nations into the peace of God's kingdom. Lord, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you come in word and in sacrament to strengthen us in holiness. Christ, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you will come in glory with salvation for your people. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace to people of good will. We praise you, we bless you, we adore you, we glorify you, we give you. Oh, 
us pray. O God, who show the light of your truth to those who go astray, so that they may return to the right path, give all who, for the faith they profess, are accounted Christians, the grace to reject whatever is contrary to the name of Christ, and to strive after all that does it honor. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God, forever and ever. A reading from the book of Deuteronomy. Moses said to the people, If only you would heed the voice of the Lord your God and keep his commandments and statutes that are written in this book of the law. When you return to the Lord your God with all your heart and all your soul. For this command that I enjoin on you today is not too mysterious and remote to you. It is not up in the sky that you should say, who will go up in the sky and get it for us and tell us of it that we may carry it out. Nor is it across the sea that you should say, who will cross the sea to get it for us and tell us of it that we might carry it out. No, it is something very near to you, already in your mouths and in your hearts. You have only to carry it out. The word of the Lord. reading of the letter of St. Paul to the Colossians. Christ Jesus is the image of the invisible God, the firstborn of all creation. For in him were created all things in heaven and on earth, the visible and the invisible, whether thrones or dominions or principalities or powers, all things were created through him and for him. 
He is before all things, and in him all things hold together. He is the head of the body, the church. He is the beginning, the firstborn from the dead, for in all things he himself might be preeminent. For in him all the fullness was pleased to dwell, and through him to reconcile all things for him, making peace by the blood of his cross, through him, whether those on earth or those in heaven. The word of the Lord. be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. There was a scholar of the law who stood up to test Jesus and said, Teacher, what must I do to inherit eternal life? Jesus said to him, What is written in the law? How do you read it? He said in reply, You shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your being with all your strength and with all your mind and your neighbor as yourself. He replied to him, you have answered correctly, do this and you will live. But because he wished to justify himself, he said to Jesus, and who is my neighbor? Jesus replied, a man fell victim to robbers as he went down from Jer Jerusalem to Jericho. They stripped and beat him and went off, leaving him half dead. A priest happened to be going down that road, but when he saw him, he passed by on the opposite side. Likewise, a Levite came to the place, and when he saw him, he passed by on the opposite side. But a Samaritan traveler who came upon him was moved with compassion at the sight. He approached the victim, poured oil and wine over his wounds, and bandaged them. Then he lifted him up on his own animal, took him to an inn, and cared for him. The next day he took out two silver coins and gave them to the innkeeper with the instruction, Take care of him. If you spend more than what I have given you, I shall repay you in, on my way back. Which of these three, in your opinion, was neighbor to the robber's victim? He answered, The one who treated him with mercy. Jesus answered him, go and do likewise. The Gospel of the Lord. <clears throat> Have you ever had someone reach out to you in a particular need you had, it was rather obvious, and they called at the right time or responded at just the right moment. And you reflect upon that and say, you know, that was a product of God's intervention. You might call it a God moment or some providential way God showed his care through the outreach of another person. They went out of their way to be of assistance. They seemed to to know perhaps some of the struggles you were experiencing that wasn't too public, but they kind of looked under the surface and knew just what to say or what to do, and they made all the difference. You know, that must have been what that man who was robbed and left for dead on the side of the road, how he must have felt especially after having two holy people pass him by and not even bother to help him. And it was this foreigner, this Samaritan, 
who were at, Samaritans were at odds with the Jewish people, and yet this Samaritan went beyond the bounds of propriety and social custom to reach out to this person who was obviously in need of attention and care. An unexpected stranger who responded. And he responded, as it says in today's gospel, he was moved with compassion at the sight. There was something that happened within him. His heart was touched in such a way as to really be prompted to do something. And that's a key takeaway, I think, from today's scriptures in terms of what the Deuteronomy, Moses sharing with the Israelite people, what the commandments of God are about. The commandments of God, they're, they're something, he says, Moses in Deuteronomy today, something very near to you, already in your mouths and in your hearts, you have only to carry it out. That it becomes part of the fabric of our lives. The incorporation of those commandments aren't just rules to follow, but it becomes something more naturally coming out of a, a real sense of compassion and mercy, taking on, you might say, the mind and heart of God. And listen to what Jesus says when he responds to that question, you know, who is my neighbor? And he gives the beautiful parable of the, the Samaritan. He says, which of the three was neighbor to the robber's victim? And what did the man say? The one who treated him with mercy. And then he says, go and do likewise. Treated with mercy. Mercy emanates from the heart. Again, that compassion, that connection with the plight of another, such that we sympathize, even empathize, and want to help them in their need. We might even imagine ourselves in their shoes and not wanting anyone to pass us by, but wanting to do what we would not want to have done to us. And all that Jesus says is, go and do likewise. In other words, it's more than just following a law or what's convenient. You know, we are so busy with our lives and, you know, even on the highway. It's a dilemma for me, and I'm sure it is for some of you who you're on the highway and you see someone broken down and no one yet has, no one else has stopped to help them and you wonder, should I stop? I don't really have much skill in changing a tire or anything with regard to engines. You're hoping the person, I hope they have a, you know, cell phone they can call, call AAA. But at the very least that either desire to and in fact go and do something for the person if you're able, but if at the very least to say a prayer for them, to ask God to bless them with someone who knows what they're doing to be in a position to help the person in their particular plight. And there's certainly a lot of other, you might say, competing feelings and emotions that come when well, I'm afraid it's a busy highway, or maybe they're, you know, it's a scenario to rob somebody, you know, or some good Samaritan, in fact, they're going to take advantage of that person. You don't know. There's a lot of what-ifs that we sometimes cause us to hesitate to really do what might need to be done. But there's an important caveat to that. Again, it's not necessarily purely fulfilling what the commandment might say, love God, love neighbor, and carry that out, but also to invite the Holy Spirit 
to inspire and guide you and incline you as to what to do in that moment. Do you ever pray in the moment to say, Lord, what do you think I should do here? Help guide me. I am not quite sure about this, but I need your help. Do you ever do that? Because it's really incumbent upon us as faith-filled Catholics to trust the power and inspiration of the Holy Spirit will give us an insight, a courage, a perspective that will allow for us to better respond to that inclination that is noble and good in what concern we have for the neighbor in need, but then to better make a judgment with the inspiration of the Spirit to know whether, in fact, it is of God or not for you to respond in where you feel you might want to do it. And that goes through any aspect of our lives, big decisions, small decisions, but to always ask the Holy Spirit to help you to fulfill what you know at face value is a command of God, love God, love neighbor. All right, is this what you want me to do here or not? And as I say, at the very least, to offer a prayer for them, maybe to call the state police to say there's somebody broken down in such and such an area of the highway, they need your help. So we pray then that the Eucharist, as we now turn to the liturgy of the Eucharist and offer our lives in union with Jesus to the Father to seek to do his will and to receive the grace of Jesus in Eucharist, Holy Communion. We ask for the grace in a particular way, first to overcome what obstacles we put in the way, the excuses those things that uh, we might not even consider, you know, we just pass them by without a thought. But we pray that we can ever more be conscious of God's abiding presence, God's desire to lead and guide us in his way. Yes, and to respond to what the Lord calls us to, to love God and love neighbor. But we can do that in many ways, but the Spirit will lead us. And then to overcome those sins, those obstacles, those things we put in the way, the fear. And then we ask the Lord to help us to develop or increase our faith-motivated instinct. Our faith-motivated instinct. Coming from, as the scriptures say, from the compassion of our hearts the mercy that we want to share that we ourselves have received from Jesus. That as we receive the Eucharist, we seek to evermore have Jesus' heart, Jesus' mind, Jesus' desire to bring healing and hope and outreach to those who we, he knows is our need. That's what he did to humanity in coming down and offering his life for you and me, for the forgiveness of sins and the hope of everlasting life. And all he wants us to do is to follow his example in the way in which we're, you know, in the circumstances of our life, with our families, co-workers, and whomever we can encounter. May we start the day every day asking, Jesus, help me, Jesus. Would you help me to be your hands and your heart. Would you allow for your Holy Spirit to continue to inspire me each moment of my day? Help me make my faith ever more a part of the fabric of my being so that I am always faith motivated in my instinct to respond as you would to those I encounter who are in need.
Together now, let us profess our faith. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, consubstantial with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us men and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried, and rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who is spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. With confidence, let us now present our needs to our loving and compassionate Father who hears the cry of the poor. For the church, that we may allow the pain and suffering of others to move our hearts and spirits to a loving response, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For an end to the violence and bloodshed in our country and in our world, that God will change minds and hearts and bring about needed healing and peace, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For those on our parish ASP service trip this week, and for all who reach out to those in need, that they may find God in new ways as they share their love and gifts with others, and that God will bless them and bring them home safely, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all who are suffering, that God will bring healing to the sick, relief to those in poverty, and renewal to those who experience abuse or crime. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all who have died, that they may enjoy the vision of God forever, especially at this Mass for Kyle Nathan. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the petitions received on our parish prayer line and for the personal needs and intentions we offer in the silence of our hearts. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Saving God, your mercy heals the wounds of our world. Hear and answer these prayers we offer in the name of Jesus the Lord.
Pray, my brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. Look upon the offerings of the Church, O Lord, as she makes her prayer to you, and grant that when consumed by those who believe, they may bring ever greater holiness through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, for you laid the foundations of the world and have arranged the changing of times and seasons. You formed us in your own image and set us over the whole world in all its wonder to rule in your name over all you have made and forever praise you in your mighty works through Christ our Lord. And so with all the angels we praise you as in joyful celebration we acclaim. Holy, 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 Lord God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread, and giving thanks, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. And we Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly, we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity together with Francis, our Pope, Sean, our Bishop, and all of the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection, and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the blessed apostles and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. 
through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen, 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 amen. At the Savior's command, formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. And may the peace of the Lord be with you always. And let us offer each other a sign of peace. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed.
Let us pray. Having consumed these gifts, we pray, O Lord, that by our participation in this mystery, its saving effects upon us may grow through Christ our Lord. Deacon Jack Sullivan will provide his monthly healing service with the relic of St. John Henry Newman this Friday after evening prayer and benediction at 5 p.m. in the chapel. This takes place on the third Friday of each month. Join members of our parish staff who will participate in the Global Leadership Summit, a two-day leadership enhancement conference happening August 4th and 5th in Pembroke. Special discount pricing is available and information is available in the front narthex. The Lord be with you. May Almighty God bless you, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Go in peace, glorifying the Lord by your life. And have a wonderful week. Oh,